these basic instincts that we have in our bodies of food, sex, sleep and death. When you conduct these four things consciously, that is when you are a human being, including death, I am saying. That is when you are a genuine human being. Four things that humans can do differently than animals. Number one, food. When you are very hungry, you become like an animal. If you have not eaten for five days, you will eat like that with both hands. Like how, have you seen a, how a hungry dog will eat? Like that. A human being also will behave like that, when the need becomes like that. In Indian culture, eating is not just about filling one's stomach. It's a sacred ritual that involves gratitude, mindfulness and respect for the food. Before every meal, a prayer is offered as gratitude for the food that sustains them and to seek blessings for its nourishment. When something is very needed for you, just if you wait two minutes, you will see what is compulsive becomes conscious. Number two, sex. You must have heard about the teachings of the ancient Indian sage Vatsayana and his book The Kama Sutra. The Kama Sutra is not just a manual for sexual positions, it's a guide to leading a conscious and healthy sexual life. It emphasizes the importance of mindfulness, respect and communication in relationships. Sex should be approached with reverence and awareness. It could be a means to attain higher states of meditative experiences and spiritual growth. So, the Kama Sutra teaches us that sex is not just a physical act which is driven by compulsions or desires. Instead, it's a mindful spiritual journey that can lead to higher states of consciousness and personal growth. Instinctually, there is a certain compulsiveness. But you have an intelligence which can make you conscious and conduct that aspect of life consciously. If you don't do that, then you see every day you're hearing about rapes and brutality and all kinds of things. It's the same desire he has that any other man has, but he cannot conduct it in an aesthetically correct way, in a dignified way that his compulsions overtake his intelligence. So, first thing is, leave this nonsense about it being a sin, it being wrong, morality, that's not the point. The important thing to understand is the limited nature of what it is. Number three, sleep. If you have a dog in your home, you will know even if the dog is sleeping, if someone comes to your home, he will immediately awake and start barking. But if you are in sleep, you will not know until someone touches you and tries to awaken you up. So, what is the difference between animal and humans in sleep? Mental alertness is different, awareness is different. If you term mental alertness as awareness, then your dog is much more aware than you. But that's not right, it's not true. A wild animal is far more aware than you are, is that so? It's not true. He is mentally alert. Whenever you are constantly placed in situations where your survival is in question, you will become mentally alert. That mentally alert thing doesn't make you aware. It is just that if the mind is off, there is no mental alertness. And it need not be you don't have to sleep like an animal constantly, you have a little sound, you know, your ears go like this. That's why you are not given that kind of ears you can move. <laughs> You see how a cat or a dog is sleeping? Just a little. <laughs> you don't have to sleep like that. In your bedroom, it's not an issue of survival. <laughs> That's not an issue, is it? You can turn off the whole damn thing and sleep. Now if I go sleep in the wild, I sleep in a different way. When I go out and camp, I don't pitch a tent, I just sleep on the tree. So then I sleep in a different way, I'm constantly alert because I'm on a tree branch. <laughs> Either I could drop myself like the apple that fell long time ago, or an elephant could pluck me down, or a snake could get me. So now I'm alert mentally. But when you sleep in your bed and if you're not married, <laughs> you can 
advantage of your survival process. <laughs> There's no danger. <laughs> so mental alertness is necessary for survival. It's not awareness. Awareness is anywhere one. Nothing to do about it. Number 4 Death Leaving the body consciously is otherwise called as Mahasamadhi. Many sages and saints have attained Mahasamadhi over ages in Bharat. Sri Paramahamsa Yogananda have taken Mahasamadhi before the eyes of his students. Sri Sadguru Sri Brahma, who is known as Chakreshwara, the master of all chakras, left his body through all the seven chakras at Wellingri Hills, Coimbatore. Swami Nirmalananda attained Mahasamadhi in Karnataka after knowing the tricks and trails of body, the knowledge shared by Sadhguru. Sadhguru's wife, Sri Vijima, had attained Mahasamadhi in Coimbatore, is the recent Mahasamadhi that people could have witnessed. You will see this particularly in India. Yogis will decide when to leave. When they are very healthy and well, they sit down and they leave. Other people think, why he was healthy, why should he leave? So you want to get sick and die? Do you want to suffer in the hospital for three years and then only leave? Is that the only way to go? Please listen to this carefully because this is a situation. I... I'm not trying to trample on anything, but I want you to listen to this carefully. Is it true that the final thing that you do in your life is death? So the last thing that you do in your life, is it not very important that you do it gracefully? You're... you're all from Los Angeles. You must do it in style, isn't it? <laughs> At least gracefully. Is it also not important that other lives who are around us, when their time comes, we must facilitate that they must be able to leave gracefully, not make them a victim of medical industry that's going on around us? Tell me, if what purpose does it serve if you stretch a life which is about to exit now for another three months with all kinds of supports. Three months you stretched it in pain and misery. What does it mean? It just means that you're ignorant about the nature of life and you want to cling to something that you know and you don't want to know anything that you do not know. It's very important. We know the person. We know this person and this person and this person, that's fine. We've enjoyed their personalities but you have not touched the nature of their life. Because unless you touch the nature of your life, you cannot touch the nature of another life. So the most important thing we need to do is, we don't have to talk about death, prepare for death, nothing is needed. What we need to do is, beyond this body, which we have gathered, which you agreed to agree with me that you accumulated this, beyond this mind, which is also an accumulation of impressions and I I information, Beyond your accumulations, if you sit here right now and experience the life that you are, you will have absolutely no issue with any aspect of life, which includes death. Death is not another thing. Death, death is an ongoing thing right now. All of us are dying slowly. One day it will be complete. There are many people who cannot stop eating. It's just a good thing about eating is, if you can't stop eating, it'll be immediately noticed by everybody who did not see you eating also. Similarly, there are some people with sexuality, there are some people who fall asleep wherever they are. Satsang is a good place <laughs> It's happening, it's okay. This is the fundamental thing. These basic instincts that we have in our bodies of food, sex, sleep and death, when you conduct these four things consciously, that is when you are a human being, including death, I'm saying. That is when you are a genuine human being. Otherwise, it's an evolutionary lapse. The most important thing is, even when you are in it, are you a conscious choice? Or are you a compulsive animal? This is the thing, because the essential difference between a human being and animal is their instinctive reaction to life. We are a conscious response to life. Exercise that, it's all right. You don't have to feel guilty, you don't have to feel, oh, I am sexually driven, so I am not spiritual. 
you're driven, so you can make it as a spiritual process. Instead of being driven, if you become the driver, that is the spiritual process.